If you are considering a field research project for your third year dissertation, I'm going to talk briefly about my Bio 3061 experience to give you a flavour of what you could do. During the summer of 2019, I went to Malawi to search for a species of soft tick called Ornithodorus mubata in places where they interact with domestic pigs, warthogs and wild pigs. I then tested the ticks that I found using PCR for presence of African swine fever virus to try and determine the extent of their involvement in the cycle of disease spread in Malawi. These ticks are a natural reservoir for African swine fever virus, which causes a lethal hemorrhagic fever in domestic pigs. And around the time I was doing my research, the virus was grabbing headlines following the loss of almost 50% of China's domestic pig population due to this disease. The initial planning was pretty extensive, but crucial to the success of the project. So this involved my initial research proposal, which essentially just tested the water to see if the idea was possible. And I then found a supervisor whose own research interests had some overlap with my project idea. And after initial discussions with my supervisor, I put together a detailed plan and carried out an extensive literature review to assist in this planning and come up with suitable methodologies. The diagnostic elements of my methodology had a number of hurdles early on due to the nature of this particular project. This was because I'd be potentially working with a virus that's currently absent in the UK and causes a notifiable disease. This meant that the lab work needed to be completed in the field in Malawi as I wouldn't be able to return any of my samples to the labs here in Southampton. The cost played a, a big role in the planning um, I had to budget the project as it was almost entirely self-funded. However, Southampton did assist greatly with purchasing and providing key pieces of equipment and other lab consumables such as pipette tips and reagents with a PCR. And lastly, a full risk assessment and ethics approval was needed before the research could commence. Once I arrived in Malawi, the research involved fieldwork to search pig housing, warthog burrows and bush pig wallowing pits to search for the, the soft ticks I was looking for. It was dirty and dusty work, but strangely good fun. Here are some images from my makeshift lab, which as you can see was semi-outdoors, so not very conventional. This is where I extracted DNA from the ticks, purified the sample and ran PCR to detect presence of the virus in the ticks. I carried all this equipment with me in an extra suitcase. For me, the highlights of this experience hugely outweighed the lowlights, but in the, in the interest of balance, um, I've, I've made a few points here. So the costs, particularly if your research involves long haul travel, can be significant. Accommodation costs can also be expensive along with any project fees. Some companies such as Operation Wallacea offer a more cost controlled way of doing this type of project where the fee you pay covers accommodation, meals, project costs and that kind of thing. Uh, but the reason I took a completely independent approach was really to tailor my project precisely to my interests. The extensive preparation can't be underestimated and aside from the regulatory elements such as ethics approval and risk assessment, on a personal level you'll have flights to book, perhaps vaccinations and any other travel considerations. And with the best will in the world this is a distraction at a time when you also need to be thinking about semester two exams so it's definitely worth bearing in mind. For my project I planned to travel mid-June and the planning phase took several months and final sign-off was only obtained about three weeks before departure which was during the sem second semester exams. And then lastly the overall risks. I tried to plan for all eventualities and mitigate all risks and from a personal safety level there weren't any issues but there were elements of the project that didn't go to plan and required some changes to the initial research proposal part way through the trip. In the end it worked to my advantage but at the time it was um, pretty stressful thinking the project was going to be a flop after so much work had gone into planning. So to finish on a high, there were lots of highlights but I've, I've tried to summarise on one slide as there, there's, there's too many for this presentation. Um, travel, putting aside the biology, if you aspire to travel this is a brilliant opportunity to travel off the tourist trail and be involved in research that may have benefit to local communities or as part of wider conservation projects perhaps. I've always loved to travel so this project ticked another box for me. Um, independence, if, if you have a specific career goal in mind or a specific area of interest that you'd really like to include in your degree, then the field research project allows for independence and freedom to carry out research that's aligned really closely with your interests. My goal is a, a career in animal disease research, so this, um, this really fit the bill perfectly for me. Um, networking, it's an extra bonus with this project type. 
besides my main partner in Malawi, which was the Lilongwe Wildlife Trust, I work with different biotech companies while sourcing some equipment. It's actually surprising how much free stuff you can get from biotechs if you ask. Um, I also work with DEFRA in the early planning phase to understand the rules about bringing samples back to the UK and the APHA, which is the Animal and Plant Health Agency, who provided a plasmid for my PCR positive control. And, and then also the African swine fever experts at the Purbright Institute in Surrey. So lastly, the, the opportunities with this type of project are, are vast. You can really demonstrate so many different skills to your supervisor and other academics, which can only be a good thing in how elements of your project are marked. Um, but perhaps even more crucially, they, they bolster your CV and give you some fantastic talking points for future employers. So that's, that's all from me and thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.